Hey there, in today's episode, I'm gonna show you how I went from this to this. Stay tuned to see how I did it. To catch everyone up to speed, last week we installed all of the base cabinets that I built and painted myself, and then we installed this pony wall to support the new bar top. Now all we need is some countertops. That's more like it. Now let's rewind a little bit so I can explain how we got here. So we ended up going with a white quartzite, meaning it's a natural stone that comes from the earth rather than being man-made, and I really like the color and there's a little bit of black and grays in there too to tie in the rest of the cabinets. I always get really nervous during these installs because I'm always afraid something's going to go wrong, but this one went pretty smoothly. The only thing I had to do was to trim the backsplash a little bit just to make sure that the counter could slide underneath it. Now the countertop installers offered to caulk this joint along with all the rest, but they used a clear caulk and I didn't really want that look, so I asked them to leave it open, and then I came back and taped it out and used a specialized black caulk and it makes the joint look a lot cleaner and blends the countertop to the backsplash very nicely. I then finish it off by installing my cover plates for my two GFCI outlets. Then it was time to install all the handles on the doors. Now this can be a pretty stressful task because once you drill through your door there is no going back. So I decided to make a jig to take some of the air out of the equation. Using some scrap quarter inch plywood, I glued two pieces together at a right angle using a speed square, and then I marked out the holes for where I need to drill my handles. I started with a very small drill bit to make sure I got a perfectly accurate hole, and then I came back with a larger one to widen it. Alright, so let's screw on our handles. And as you can see, it can fit either left or right because of the three holes that we drilled. So I'm going to put it on like so. Then I'm going to take my drill bit, and this drill bit is just slightly larger than the screw for the handles. You don't want the screw to actually be screwing into the cabinet, you just want it to be screwing into the handle. So we're just creating basically a through hole here. I'm going to take my two screws. Usually you get a long and short set depending on how thick your door is. In this case I'll be using the shorter set which looks to be about an inch in total length. Then we can grab our handle. And I recommend using a screwdriver for this part. You can use an impact driver or a drill, but you might accidentally cross thread your handle and you don't want to mess with it too much. So I like to do it by hand with a screwdriver just to be safe. And there you go. Handle is all done. Now I'll just move on to the other door over here, repeating the same process. I actually bought two different handle sizes for this project. The 4 inch is what you see here on screen, but I also bought a 7 inch handle that I was planning to mount vertically on each door which is the more traditional look. However, I opted for the 4 inch one mounted horizontally as you see here, and I really like the way that it turned out. To elevate the design of the bar, I decided to buy some more of this wire mesh that you may recognize from our kitchen remodel that I posted a few videos back. I really like the look of this, and it has a gold hue to it, but it's not too gold, it's more of an antique finish, and it's going to go in the doors of our upper cabinets. I'm actually not going to go into too much detail on these upper cabinets in this particular video, because next week's video I'm going to do a deep dive on how to do custom LED lighting, so stay tuned for that one. I then decided to move over to the sink and install the faucet and hook up all the water lines. And if you recall, these cabinets are only 18 inches deep instead of the standard 24, so it was pretty hard to find a sink that fit those dimensions, but I was able to find this one on Amazon, and it came in black, and I really like the look of it. And it also has this really cool drink washing station too, so I'll make sure to link it down in the description. Alright, here we go. I'm going to turn the water on for the first time. Hopefully we have no leaks and everything works. Alright, the water's now turned on. Let's see if the faucet works. Might be some air in the line. We also need to test to see if the drain works and it's not working. It's a lot of water. <laughs> I need to clean that up. Fortunately, it was a pretty quick fix. I just had to tighten down a nut on one of the water lines. But now, let's install the TV. If only it was that fast, right? In order to hide the power cord coming from the TV, I decided to put an outlet directly behind it. And of course, the one spot that I decided to cut out, there is a horizontal stud going directly across the center of it. What are the chances? I was able to determine that it was not structural, so I was trying to cut it out with my oscillating tool, but it was becoming very difficult, so I just decided to take out the tongue and groove piece completely to make it a little bit easier. Man, has this been a journey. Just trying to get an outlet for this TV has been quite a complicated task. So there's actually vertical studs going every 16 inches as normal, but then when I popped open this hole, I saw that there was also studs going horizontally at random distances. I was going to try to go to the outlet in this cabinet, but there's a stud right about here, so I'd have to go 
through that stud and go through another stud going down. So I decided to try to access the outlet on the other side of the wall in the bedroom, which is on the right side of this vertical stud. So it's a little bit easier to access. So I then grabbed a Forstner bit, put it in my drill, and then I was able to barely get my drill into this hole. I actually had to take the battery out to fit it in and then I could slip it back into place after it was in the wall. Drilled a hole straight down through the horizontal stud and now I can feed some Romex down through that hole and hopefully access the outlet on the other side of the wall. At least that's what I'm hoping for. So as you can see, I had to pull some boards off on this side in order to access the outlet. So here's that outlet and you can see those white cords that were already going to it. And then the yellow cord is the new one that I just fed down. So I'll thread it through, attach it to all these other cords, attach it to the outlet, and then we should have power, hopefully. I ended up switching it from a 1 gang to a 2 gang because I'll have my outlet here for the TV and also a dimmer switch for those LEDs in next week's video. I then plugged it in for the first time and it turned on. Now we're officially done with all the electrical. I really like the tongue and groove wood behind the TV but I'm pretty sure we have enough of that in this basement so I added some Duroc and I planned on putting tile behind here but then I went to the tile store and nothing was really jumping out at me and tiling is expensive and time consuming and then Bianca had a great idea of doing a concrete accent wall. We've already done this in a bedroom and bathroom upstairs and I also made a concrete coffee table too. It's inexpensive, easy to do, and the end result is really top notch. I also really like the idea of having a theme carried throughout the home in different rooms. Alright so I just finished covering up the whole wall. It's still a bit wet and needs to fully dry but I think I'm going to go ahead and pull off the tape now while it's still wet so I get a nice clean line. If you let it harden it's going to crack and create a jagged edge. I do probably need to put on another coat or two in certain areas. I'm just gonna risk it though and pull out the tape now and just be extra careful when I put on those later coats. Let's get to it. I love frog tape. <laughs> Such clean lines. While I let the concrete dry, I decided to assemble all four of the bar stools. I also found these on Amazon and was originally looking for something with a back, but these are surprisingly comfortable. By now the concrete had dried and I went to put the TV back in place, but no matter how hard I tried, it would not lock into the bracket. Oh my God. <laughs> It turns out that the thickness of the concrete wall was just ever so slightly too much so it couldn't lock into the bracket so I added some scrap quarter inch sheets of plywood on the back of the bracket to push it out to the right depth. After centering it, I could satisfyingly pull off all the plastic. One of our last things to do is add our three pendant lights above the bar. I had the wiring done for this a long time ago before I even sprayed the basement black and now I'm realizing that I do like the positioning however I'm gonna have to raise them up into the ceiling because my pendants hang a little bit too low. It does re-expose this raw wood but I can just paint that black pretty easily. Let's get to it. Finding the perfect light fixture for a space is not easy and takes a lot of work so I had to scour the internet but I was able to find these three and I'm really happy with them. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. These lights actually have the ability to be hung from really high ceilings so it came with like a six foot cord that I had to cut down. It was pretty nerve wracking to cut it because there's no going back at that point but I was able to get them just high enough so it doesn't block your view to the TV. Now there's just a few remaining little tasks left, one of them being this baseboard so I made sure to keep all my pieces from the demo and was able to use a scrap from that to replace it. So we're finally nearing the end and I was just putting in the last piece which is this cover for the drink washing station and kind of like a drying rack and because of the way the counters were cut it just doesn't fit it's like an eighth of an inch too narrow so unfortunately I think I'm gonna have to cut off a side of this with my angle grinder I'm gonna try and hide it as best I can but I can't think of any other way to fit it in here what I should have done is had it fitted when the sink was installed but at this point it's too late I didn't realize it at the time so we're gonna have to make do. The bar was then finally ready to be stocked with some drinks, and the funny thing is we're not big drinkers here so we were only able to fill 4 out of the 6 shelves, but I'm sure we'll fill the other 2 later on. I then replaced the light on the left hand side of the bar, and this is pretty much the only remaining thing from the old bar, and we don't really need a light in this location, but I thought I'd leave it here as a nice little homage. And of course we need something to play while we drink. Just so proud of how this project turned out. It is beyond my expectations and my expectations were pretty high to begin with. Let me know what you guys think of it down in the comments and if you have any questions about the build 
You can also leave them down there and I'd be happy to answer them. I'll make sure to link all of the tools and products that I use throughout the video down in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please smash that like button as it really helps out the channel and helps me to grow my audience. And if you haven't already, please subscribe as we post a new DIY video every single Saturday morning on a new project as we renovate this lake house. Next week, I'll be doing a deep dive on how to do custom LED lighting as I did on the bar here, so stay tuned for that one. I think we just nailed the color palette on this bar between the black cabinets and other black accents, contrasted by these nice white quartz countertops, and then we pulled in the wood tones from the wall with a couple gold accents here and there. It just came together so nicely, and I'm really proud of the end result. And as always, thanks for watching, and happy building. See you next week.